Hello, my name is Leopoldo Armesto and in this presentation we are going to continue by learning how to use uh, Fatlino and particularly we are going to learn about how to use math instructions and variable instructions. So this is the outline of the presentation. We are going to talk about variables, um, particularly the type of variables that we have, uh, their scope and also uh, a, kind, a special kind of uh, variables which are called arrays. And then we're going to move into three examples, um, a minimum maximum computation of a signal, and then another uh, example which is uh, to implement a, a simple state machine, and a final example in order to compute the moving average of a signal. So in any programming language we have or we use variables to store data. Uh, depending on the platform and depending on the ar architecture, this variable might change. And in, in these tables you see here uh, the numeric variables we use uh, in order to store numbers. Uh, we have booleans uh, which can store 0 or 1 value, only these two values, and they, they occupy 1 bit. Then we have a byte that uses 8 bits and can store positive numbers between 0 and 255. Uh, and also, uh, let's say we have a, another kind of variable which is called a char. A char, it's a character that it's encoded also in an 8-bit number, okay, so it's like a byte. And then we have, for larger numbers, we use ints. Uh, in Arduino, the ints use 16 bits, while in ESP32 uh, uh, processors, ints use 32 uh, bits. So that's why, uh, that's the main difference between these two architectures. And then we have a long int to uh, uh, store a very uh, big number. Uh, integral number in this case, and then we use float, which is used in order to uh, store a real number uh, using 32 bits in this case. Of course, there are, there are other uh, variable types, but these are the main ones that we're going to use. Also, it's important to know that uh, variables have a scope. They can be local or global. If we use a, a local variable, that means that this variable can be used within the scope of uh, the variable has been declared that means the function that this variable is being used. And if we use a global variable, that means that we can use it anywhere in our program, okay? Uh, ideally, or in principle, uh, everything would be better to, uh, to use global variables, so then we don't have any kind of uh, problems with uh, concerning about the scopes, but that will force us to uh, use different variable names if we are going to use uh, variables with the same meaning and uh, that's going to be uh, complex to maintain. Uh, the recommendation is to keep local variables as possible within the context of the function that is using it and if not possible then use global variables. Indeed here we use, uh, we see an illegal instruction or in a illegal use of a local variable Bar one here, it's defined in the setup function. So it's only available, or we can only use it within the setup function. If we try to use this var one here in the loop function, then we will have, or that will produce an error. That's an illegal use of this variable. In array or array variables are group of elements uh, that of the same type that use continu continuous uh, memory and those variables can be accessed through an index. So they are indexed, it's an index variable. And they can be individually accessed, of course. And we can see it as a chunk of memory that will be stored here. A variable will, will use all this, uh, this memory size. Uh, this is an array of size 5. And each of the elements can contain any other value, any value we want and we can access and store individually those elements. Here we see the example in Fatalino code, just, uh, just to show how it works. So here we declare an array variable which is called r, and this, uh, in this case is an array of five elements, so the size of the array is five. And then here what we are doing is we are, let's say, summing or accumulating the values of the array elements in a for loop from 0 to 4, which are 5 iterations, and each of these iterations we uh, sum or we, we assign the value of the previous sum value with the array of the fifth element, or sorry, of the eighth element 
uh, here, as you can see. So we are accessing to the if element here of to the array, and we are summing all of them. This is just simply to show a, a brief example about how to use arrays. So now let's move to the actual examples we want to explain. Here in this first example, the idea is to compute the minimum and the maximum values between uh, consecutive measurements that we use, we read from a potentiometer uh, from an analog signal. And the idea is that when the, the problem starts, we set an LED on, then we start reading, and uh, we compute, uh, the, or we, we measure the, 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 the value of the signal, we transform it into, or we map it here with a linear transformation, uh, this value into a number that will be contained between 0 and 100. And then here we do the minimum maximum operations and for that we use variables, these two variables we use here, that has been initialized actually, uh, the minimum, the min val variable has been initialized to 100, which is the maximum possible value, and the max value has been initialized to 0, which is the minimum possible value, with the purpose that, or with the intention that if we do this operation on the first time, the this variable here will take this value here and this value here will take this value here but on the next iterations while this condition is true then we will be computing the minimum of all the historic measurements uh, so this will be true meanwhile we do not push the button once once we push the button then we set the LED off and we display uh, a text displaying the minimum and the, and the maximum values so let's see a live demo of this example. So here, uh, here we have uh, the potentiometer, the LED and the button. Let me uh, show the code uh, in order to display the serial monitor here. Yes, and now we can press, let me put initially the position of the potentiometer, let's say, oh, well, it's fixed there, uh, yeah, it's fixed there, uh, so let me start, in this case, uh, we are, uh, we have the potentiometer here, and then we can modify the position of the potentiometer, I put it to the maximum, uh, sorry, I'm moving the wiper, okay, and this is, uh, we are computing the minimum and the maximum values and once we, so you see that the LED is on, so once we press the button here we will see the message. So the maximum is 100 we, because we move the wiper here to the maximum position but the minimum position we registered during the movement was the 21% 20, uh, position. Okay, so let's move back to the presentation. In this second example the idea is to implement a very simple state machine the idea is, uh, in some, uh, uh, in some uh, programs, we need to remember in which state we are in order to do some actions. In particular, here, we, this is a very simple example in which we are going to control the status of an LED and depending on the, bat of, of the button, which will be our input signal, we'll, we will change between one state on the other one. And the idea is to print a message only when this uh, when we change from one state to, to, to the other one. So, conceptually we have a machine that we have a status or a state that will be off, the LED will be off, and when we push the button, then we move to a different state. And then when we release it, then we move back to the, the state. So, this state, it's part of a memory where the, our program is right now. So, for that we use a variable, a global variable in this case. And in this example, as you can see, we are reading uh, the push button, so if, if it's not true, that means that the button is pushed. Remember, it's a pull-up uh, resist, uh, resi uh, pull uh, or it's a button connected to a pull-up resistor. And then here is actually the state machine. So if pushed and the status is off, then we set the status true, and then we print the message and we set the LED high, on, yeah, so that means that we are now in this status, so meanwhile the, the button is still pushed, this condition will not be true anymore because status has changed from false to true, so this condition will not be executed, any, uh, will not be executed anymore, so that means that the setting let on message will be printed just once. 
then when we release the button, this, um, if this condition here will become true, and the status, which was true, now it's false, we print the message and we set off the LED, and then we go back to the off status. So let me show you how this example works. Uh, since we are also printing messages, let me display or the serial monitor here. Uh, let me start the simulator. And here, uh, right now, the LED is off. If I press this uh, button and I hold the, the, the button, I, you could see that I'm printing the setting LED on, but I only printed it once, and the LED is off, uh, on, sorry. And if I release, then I print the setting button let off message and the LED turns off. Okay, and I can do that on, off, on, off. But we're doing only the action, let's say, of printing just once. Okay, so now let's move to the third example. Uh, and then here the idea is to compute the moving average. And uh, moving average is, uh, think of an, a set of numbers that we have, uh, let's say, store values over the time, uh, we have a mean. We can compute the mean of, the, of those numbers, just by basically computing or summing all of them and divided by the number of elements we have on this table. Okay? But the moving average, the idea is that we are going to shift all the previous uh, or the current values that we have, we shift them to the right, so this 10 it's here now in the position 1, this 5 is now in this position, and we get a new measurement, and this new measurement, let's say, it takes the value 13. The idea is how we can compute the new mean without computing, again, the full list of old numbers. Imagine that we do this with a very big table, and then we have to do some all, all these numbers one by one, and this is time-consuming. So, instead of doing that, a moving average, what it, take, what it does is, okay, let's use the old mean value, and now let's take the new value, and subtract it, or make the difference with respect to the oldest value, which is in this case is 11, and then divide this difference with the array size, and that's the new mean. So it's, this was the previous or the current mean we have, this is the new measurement, this was the oldest measurement, so the difference is 2, and this is the number of arrays, so this is the new mean updated. And this is actually what we do here in this example, and for that we use an array. So we build an array of uh, the size of the numbers of elements we want to do this moving average. Uh, we, we store it as a variable which is called values. And here in the loop of the Arduino code, what we do is, okay, let's keep the oldest value before we update, we, we do any operation. So this is the ninth, the ninth element of the array. So let's keep the oldest value on a variable. Then here what we do is we shift the elements, so every element uh, at the position i minus 1 will be, let's say, stored in the position i, so everything will be shift, and here we read the, uh, the signal and we store it at position 0. Okay, now we have all the, uh, the array updated, instead of computing the, the, the mean with all the elements of the array, we are doing the moving average by using the formula, as explained before, the previous mean, which is a variable that we, a global variable we have defined it here, the previous mean plus the difference between the new measurement, which is stored at position 0, and the oldest uh, value, divided by the array size, and that will, be, that will be the new mean. Let me show you on an example how this works. Here we have a potentiometer to simulate uh, the, uh, the signal that we want to uh, display here on, on the graph. So let me start the simulation and you will see that here we have a signal and besides here, for instance, besides the, the, the position of the potentiometer hasn't changed, at the first, uh, the first iterations, the, the, the value for the mean that we're displaying was increasing until we have, of course, all values with the same value, so that's why we have a constant. But now here we can modify the position of the wiper, okay? And the difference with respect to, uh, let's say, uh, doing this without the moving average is that somehow this signal, it's filtered as well, it's smooth. 
So once, for instance, let's say I put it fixed position, then it takes some time in order to stabilize. So this is a way to make a filter. Okay, so in this presentation, I have explained how to use math instructions and also variable instructions with Fatalino. Thank you very much.